Okay, now let's go to the tactics of uh, Israel in this invasion. One, they're using white phosphorus. White phosphorus is a chemical weapon. For those of you who don't know, uh, when it meets oxygen, and uh, here's the funny thing about Earth, it's surrounded by oxygen, uh, it produces a white smoke that then comes, falls down on whoever's uh, underneath it that uh, burns your skin. But it doesn't just stop at the skin. It keeps going uh, on a lot of occasions until it hits its bone. It causes second degree and third degree burns for sure. It is outlawed by the Geneva Conventions. But uh, the clever folks uh, in Israel and the United States, because we use it in Iraq, and Israel used it earlier in Lebanon, uh, have come up with an exception. Oh, don't worry, we're not using it as a weapon. If we did, of course, that would be a war crime. Instead, uh, we're using it as a smoke screen or illumination. Oh, you didn't have any other ways to light up the sky, and so you chose to use a poison gas instead. Um, yeah, I would go for a different way of going about that objective. That was the excuse we mainly used in Iraq. Uh, the Israelis are saying, no, no, it's just a smoke screen so our soldiers can come in. Well, your soldiers wouldn't want to come in because then their skin would be burned off. You see, it's a chemical weapon outlawed by the Geneva Tr Treaty of 1980. And by the way, this smoke screen is literally a smoke screen. There is no such exception. It just, they forgot to include, hey, don't also in use it as a smoke screen. They said, don't use it as a weapon. And they said, aha, well, if we don't use it, uh, this chemical weapon as a weapon, then we could use it anyway. No, you can't. It's a war crime either way. Now, you're especially not supposed to use it in civilian populations. You know why? Because when it falls, it burns anyone underneath it. So if there are kids or women or elderly, or just flat-out civilians, they could even be men that are not part of Hamas. It's possible in a city, when you drop it on a city, uh, they get burned. They get burned alive. And then we invaded Iraq because they had weapons of mass destruction? Because they had chemical weapons? Come on, man. The hypocrisy of America and Israel these days knows no bounds. No bounds whatsoever. Now, uh, that's okay, though, because they're fighting terrorists. As we burn the civilians alive, we're the good guys, so that's allowed. It's collateral damage. Come on, we're just using it as a smoke screen. That's all. Oh, everybody underneath it happened to be burned alive? Well, what can you do? We were using it as a smoke screen. It's hideous. Now, believe it or not, that's actually the thing that, that is not the thing that has me most angry about what Israel has done, as far as tactics are concerned. No, what has me most angry is what they did with Nizar Rayan. He was one of the leaders of Hamas. Now, uh, Mr. Rayan was a political leader as well as a military leader, and he often bragged of being on the front lines with uh, the Hamas soldiers, which he was. He would often wear uh, military fatigues, so um, he seems like a legitimate target, right? I mean, here he is. He's uh, encouraging suicide bombings. In fact, one of his sons did a suicide bombing at the age of 22, and he was proud of him. Okay. All right. Good. 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 He's a terrorist. We feel much better. So, what what did Israel do? Why am I concerned about this? They dropped a bomb on his house, with his whole family in it. Now he has four wives. Some interpretations of Islam allow you to have four wives. Some others don't. It depends on what country and what culture you're part of. Now, the only reason I mention that is because. It allows uh, Americans and Westerners and Israelis to think, oh, look at this guy. I mean, he was Hamas. He was kind of military. Four wives. Sounds foreign to me. So let's just kill them all. Uh, all of his wives dead. At least four of his children are dead. Thirteen uh, dead, including Ryan. So 12 civilians dead. Uh, two other children missing and presumed to be in the rubble. So overall, realistically, 15 dead, including at least six children and four wives. Now, you say, what could we do? Collateral damage. He was using them as civilian shields. No, he wasn't using them as civilian shields. He was living in his house. Now, if Hamas sent in a suicide bomber and killed a top Israeli leader, could be anybody, it could be Ehud Barak, it could be Livni, uh, Omer, whatever, you know what would happen. As I'm saying this, the blood is boiling in Israeli supporters minds and in their heads. They're going, how can you even suggest that? Right? That is so dangerous. Right. 
So if Hamas had done the same exact thing, let's take Ehud Barak, because he's the defense minister. He's the one that orders all these bombings and the invasion and the white phosphorus and all of it, right? If they dropped a bomb on, or the suicide bomber walked in, however, whatever means they have, dropped, uh, killed Ehud Barak and his entire family, what do you think Western reaction would be? Western reaction would be, these sons of bitch terrorists, these scum, look at this, they killed one of the Israeli leaders, and they killed his whole family, his women and his wife, his wife in his case, his children, whatever other relatives they have, it'd be in the news nonstop. They would show that funeral, they would show the bloodied uh, remains, they would show the building, they would show it over and over and over again, and talk about what evil terrorist Hamas was. Now Israel does the same exact thing to a Hamas leader and his entire family. Well, what can you do? See, Hamas and the Palestinians and the people living in the Gaza Strip, they're not really people. We've dehumanized them. They're terrorists. So anything you do to a terrorist is A-OK. -okay. It's perfectly acceptable. It's just collateral damage. Oh, you dropped a bomb on his wife and kids and killed them all. It's okay, you're a state. State violence is allowed. Because we have F-16s and we have bombs. And we drop them from the sky so we don't see it. Oh, he, no, no, that's not a suicide bomber. Someone didn't die on our side from that attack. So that doesn't count. We just kill them, none of us die. So that doesn't count. That's not terrorists. Look, the other reason I'm so angry about this, because what kind of a precedent does it set? Now, if you're a Palestinian or you're part of Hamas or you're an Arab or you're a Muslim who is upset about this, what incentive do you have not to attack our leaders and their families? You seem to have absolutely no incentive. In fact, you have a tremendous incentive to do likewise. Now, I think it is counterproductive. I think it's stupid. I, I, and I think it's immoral. And I hope that Palestinians or Arabs or Hamas doesn't do anything of the, of the kind. Okay? And I hope that they prove that they're better than that. Now, but if you are a member of Hamas, and you have to look at it from their perspective to see how they would react, to see if what you did makes sense or doesn't make sense. See, actions call for reactions, etc. Now, if you're a member of Hamas, and they just killed one of your leaders and his whole family, what would prevent you from trying to do likewise? I mean, obviously, the Israeli Defense Forces would prevent you. But what moral argument? Would there be any moral argument? No, of course there wouldn't be any moral argument. So now all the Israeli leaders, I guess they're comfortable with that possibility, but you have to understand something. As Western countries and as the United States, we support the government of Israel. We support it 128%. Bush came out again over the weekend, and what did he say? Hamas is 100% wrong, Israel is 100% right. Hey, don't worry about it. Hamas had this coming. They asked for it. They asked for an invasion of their uh, city, and they asked for their civilians to be killed. He put all the civilian deaths on Hamas's head. Because it's not like, because Hamas fired a couple of rockets. That's why uh, innocent civilians in the Palestinian territories, who are not even involved with Hamas, should have been killed. It's all Hamas's fault. So, um, if you're on that side of the equation, are you going to think, hey, are American leaders and their families fair game? You would logically think that. And that scares the hell out of me. I think it's a terrible, terrible precedent.